Independence Eve. <laughs> um, we're about to get started here in church. Just a couple announcements, though. This is a fellowship. We'll be passing the mic around. Raise your hand if you want to say something. If you do get the mic, though, don't be flailing about messing around with the mic, causing issues. Just hold it like this. A couple inches away from the face. Keep it still. Bathrooms down the hall to the left. We'll direct you if need be. No food or drink in the sanctuary. Yeah. No food or drink in the sanctuary. And um, get it going. Back to Jesse. Thank you. Amazing. You were on the bike yesterday, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Good morning. Welcome to the church. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you all for being with me. You can get involved by going to our chat line on YouTube there. The chat line uh, and Hake will res let me know and I can get to your questions and comments. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. How y'all? Amazing. amazing. And happy 4th of July. Yeah. That's amazing tomorrow is the 4th of July. What does 4th of July mean to you, if anything? A reminder to be appreciative of the greatest country this side of heaven. Yeah. Um, and just remind uh, not, not to be one of those people who is like a hater. Yeah. It's amazing that they're trying to erase the greatness of the country. You know, you would think they would be building it up, making it better, but instead they're trying to get rid of it. Who would have thought? What does it mean to you? Uh huh. That's a good question. I think, uh, what does the 4th of July mean to me? Is that the question? Right. What is the 4th of July? Uh -huh. I think it uh, just reminds us of our independence, the reason why we're special and unique in the world. And um, it reminds me to not take for granted those things that we have. Uh, does it seem that we are free in America? It seems to you that we're free? So I think the founders laid the foundation for that freedom. Yeah. It's up to the generations as they go on to take hold of those and to protect those, which anyway were observations from what God had already given us. Yeah. So all the, uh, the, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights are just what the creators of those documents observed that God had already given us and they fought to protect and uphold those. So are you teaching your kids to like appreciate America as they're growing up? Absolutely. Yeah. America, the police, the firemen, right on. all of those things because they're important. Right on, man. Oh yeah. No, because a lot of parents are not teaching their children that anymore. That's crazy. Yeah, it is. That's it's crazy. insane. Amazing. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you, Alexis? Um, what's interesting is before I would never th really think twice about the 4th of July or about even being an American, really. Um, you wouldn't it think twice about it mm -mm, before? No, but this year and last year as well, um, it really put into perspective for me the fact that this country really was founded by strong Christian white yeah. men. And um, it's, that re it's that awareness of what Christianity and what decency does and what c can come of it and it's just a reminder to just be grateful and it's a reminder for me to be decent be appreciative of what we have going on here yeah. about the firemen like he was saying the police the policemen everybody it's just it's a it just it's a it makes me aware of of how 
it used to be, and that with Christianity there really is a sense of decency, and that can remain in you, and it's just, yeah, it just reminds me of, of all of that. Right on. Amazing. I remember growing up, Fourth of July was a big deal to us. It really was a big deal. And even though at the time we didn't, we didn't grow up around parks and things like that, but what would happen is they would have a major Fourth of July at the church, around the church area, on the grounds there. Everybody, the mother, mama would show up and people would come home from the visit and it would be like a big deal. Now we have people who want to boycott the 4th of July. How can that be? What kind of mindset is that, you know? They want to boycott. How do you boycott the 4th of July? Calling it racist and all kind of crazy stuff. But it used to be a major deal. It really did. So when you were growing up, was it a major deal for you in the white shirt? Did you celebrate the 4th of July growing up? My dad and uh, fam the whole family would get together, barbecue, yeah. celebrate that United States had one of the best in in independent countries in the world. Everybody wanted to live in the United States. You know, they still do. Yeah, they <laughs> but still do. We'd have the greatest uh, turnout. Our neighbors, everybody would get together. Yeah. You know, there was no problems. There wasn't so much shooting up in the <clears throat> air like recently where people didn't respect the arms the, the way they should be used. Right. You know? Yeah. So there, was so, there wasn't so much burning either. Like, yeah. take care of the kids when they're doing their thing with their fireworks. That's right. Got to be very That's dangerous. a good point. You're right about that. Nowadays, you don't want to go to a firework. You think you'll get shot or something. Right. <laughs> and the fireworks sound like bombs. Exactly. Like a war is happening. What a mess, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> what a mess. <laughs> so what is it like having your son back? What has it been for you having your son back? We, 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 we get together. It's, 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 it's a miracle. Like, I can't believe, you know, all these years had gone by, and we hadn't, I didn't even know he was out here living in Santa Monica. All right. So I'm so happy and proud that uh, you emphasized to him that he had to look for me to find me after 50 years. Yes. That's half a century. It's a miracle that, like I say over and over, and, and I really... I used to pray a lot for him and my other son, JJ, that someday would, I would get together with them and at least see, look, see what they look like. Right. You know? Yeah. And uh, I'm so happy now. You know, we get together quite a bit. Now he's getting to know his sisters, his cousins, uncles, you know. So do you like him? I love him. So does he have a bad attitude or a good attitude? Oh, he has a very good attitude. Oh, good. Yeah. Very good attitude. So, so, so come, because sometimes when we find our children, we don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> we want to throw them back because they're so angry and out of control, you know. He, he, uh, he talks really highly of you, and, and uh, he told me yesterday, as a matter of fact, he goes, Dad, we need to go see the pastor, you know. Well, I'm I glad, said, oh, man. I'm I glad. said, I want to go. Let's go. So... We made can it a plan. You, can and, you imagine uh, having children growing up right around you and you don't know it? Mm -hmm. You guys could have been passing each other on the streets and not even realize it. Uh -huh. Well, good, man. Yeah, but I'm so, I'm very happy he's back into my life, you know? Yes. And he, he is too. He, uh, he likes to kid around with my grandkids, which is in you know, his nieces now. And we get together and they, they, they can't believe that I, he's an uncle to them or whatever after all these years that gone I by. I know. Yeah. So... It's a, it's a really nice, real super nice. Nice, man. Do they call you Uncle Joe? <laughs> no, no, they don't call me Uncle Joe. Uh, so, uh, so what is it like having a, a whole new family? It's, it's nice because I lived in California on loan, so I was like always planning on going back to see my family, but uh, now I have family here, so I have no reason to have to travel to do things, I could always right. just go see family now, whenever I want to, which is nice. And how is it for you having your father in your life at this time? It's very strange and new. It's, 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 it's comforting. Like, I didn't know that there was a, a need or a hole or something missing until yeah. I found it. I was like, oh, okay, now it feels good. I, I, didn't, I didn't know that before. Right on, man. I understand. Amazing. So, 
Um, anybody here for the first time? I know you are, you are. Oh, okay. Tell us your name and how did you find us? Uh, Jonathan. Um, my name is Jonathan. Uh -huh. uh, found you on YouTube. And uh, after the show, I found out you were a pastor. I started listening to your message and just kind of found my way out here. Didn't plan on doing it, but. Have you been helped by the message? Big time, yes. In, in what way? Um, it, it, it's helping to clarify things, um, things that I, you know, feel like I already believed inside, but you put it in a way that makes sense, and yeah. it, um, it sort of helps to clarify things that are confusing. Right on. Good. Any questions or anything? Uh, not at the moment. Just want to take in the experience. Um, you know, I appreciate everything you do and uh, all that you have to say. And it, there's too much for me to say. So at the moment now. Uh, Did you go and forgive your mother and father? I'm not sure exactly how. Um, I I know the the message. I see what you're saying. Um, and I can't exactly figure out how to do it. I don't know if that's a mental block of mine or. You don't know how to go over there and say, "Hey, I'm sorry for resenting you." I, it sounds so easy. Yeah, no, I, I, not exactly. Cause I, you don't know how to do that? I guess it sounds simple, yeah, but maybe it's just in my head that I don't think. I, maybe I'm overthinking it. I don't know. You're not thinking it? What do you mean? Like I'm overthinking it. Like it, it sounds simple. Yeah, going like, um, you know, forgive them for things that they didn't mean to do. Right. And uh, things that they didn't know what they were doing. Um, uh, but what is there to think about concerning that? Uh, nothing that I could put into words, to be honest. It's, um, hmm. Are you afraid to do it? I'm sure on some level, yeah. There's some sort of fear yeah. there that I can't exactly, you know, pinpoint. Yeah, it's quite simple. Once you see you resent, go and forgive. God will forgive you, and the rest will start to happen for you. Yes, I don't know exactly that it's resentment that I have. Um, oh, okay. You don't yeah. know if you resent your parents or not? I may and just don't know it. Right. Um, so, yeah. Are you doing a silent prayer? A little, not as oh, much okay. as I should. Yeah, yeah you tough. should do it so you can see what's in there, and then you would know. Because I don't, I don't want you to do it just because I said it. I want you to see it for yourself. Yeah. So when you do go and forgive, you'll be free. Yeah, I see it. It's like the answer's right there, and I just got to do it. Yeah, um, absolutely. I guess that's it, yeah. Good, yeah, man. This is your first time? Yeah. Uh, let me have the mic. How old are you? Twelve. Twelve. Wow, you old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Welcome. How did you hear about us? Awesome. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. What's your name? Noah. Noah. Nice name, Noah. Tim's grandson. Oh, you're Tim's grandson? Yep. So that's your grandfather? Yeah. You call him Tim or granddad? I call him Pop. Oh, yeah. As usual. No. <laughs> well, welcome, Noah. Thanks. Right on. Tim, this is your first time, huh? Yeah, this is my first time. How did you find us? Um, I heard you, well, on YouTube oh, a couple okay. years ago. Um, I was watching you on The Fallen State. Like, I, w I was interested in the guest that you were interviewing on The Fallen State. Right. And then I just started watching your videos. And... What happened with me is, I'm, I'm not a relig I was never a religious person. Yeah. I mean, the, the closest thing to me reading the Bible was watching that movie that I, I just gave Oh, okay. You. But, um, but it was like you were speaking to something that I already knew inside yes. of me. And I we was going already to know the truth. That was so interesting. Absolutely, man. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I was going through some problems with uh, my fiance at the time and um, th there was just a lot of pain and but I heard y y your message and what you had had from forgiving your your parents and yes. I wanted that so I just went ahead and did it and uh, it's you went and dealt with your parents yes I did and how did that go um, it it went well it, I felt dumb doing it but I, I just <laughs> I just like ignored that, right on. And I just yeah. went forward with it anyhow. Like right. my dad, I was so resentful towards my dad. I hadn't talked to him in years. I haven't seen him. And uh, I went and I, I, you know, video chatted him. 
And uh, it went really well with him, and he was like really happy. And then with my mother, um, <laughs> she kind of like, she, kinda, she felt weird about it, but I knew that she knew yeah. <laughs> what I was talking about. Yes. Uh, and it went as good as it could go. Uh, you know, she, uh, she like, didn't agree with what I was saying. Of, of course, course not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, it went well, and it, it did remove, see, I was a total beta, and I used to get angry a lot, but it, it <laughs> did remove the anger from me. It, it took a, a little bit, but like I still have episodes like where I'm angry, but I see them. Right on. Yeah. And you know, I, I, what your message has done for me, it uh, has helped me see the not me clearer than ever before. Right on, man. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Very nice. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Nice. So, uh, any questions, anybody? Did anybody see the movie Revolver? Yeah. Oh, good. So, four people. You didn't see it yet? I had been hearing you talk about it for the last like week or so, and yeah. I've been wanting to watch it. So, I've been yeah. trying to hold off discussing it so that everybody, most people get a chance to see it, but I understand. Um, what was your impression of it? That moved, well, I, I'll tell you my story. Well, it was, it was quite complex, so I was a little, like, I think I need to watch this two or three more times, because <laughs> it was... Uh, Quite intense. And what does complex mean? Complex was that there was so many layers to the amount of characters and what the action was going on that even the message was, it was in there, but it was so hard to see because there was just a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot for me. I was actually, I kind of was taken back by it because it was so much. Yeah. If you're not awake, you will miss the message. Mm -hmm. You won't see the message. But if you're working on being awake, if you're like thinking about being awake, you won't miss, you still, I, that movie was so nice, I had to watch it twice. <laughs> and so I watched it last week and again last night. So I could, and I picked up even more from it. Mm. It was like even more amazing. And it's everything I've been talking about, we've been talking about for the last 32 years. Wow. Really, it's everything. It's really it's, whoever made that movie, I, I think Madonna, ex-husband, yeah, Guy Ritchie. Guy Ritchie made it? Yeah. That man is on to something. No wonder Madonna couldn't handle him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so you saw it? Yeah, yeah. What did you get from it, if anything? Uh, it makes you question um, why we hold on to things. Um, you know, I won't, without giving anything away, uh, um, when he saw things from, from a different perspe perspective, um, it changed how he saw things. And, you know, Was it set up? You feel like you need to watch it again to get the whole thing? Yeah, I did. I have to watch it twice. Oh, you watched it twice? Yes. Yeah. And was there anything that stood out for you? Um, Other than that, what he said? Yeah, how he started to see up here, you know, he had a little bit more going on there than he did before yeah. the, the events in the beginning of the movie. And he really got to see that about himself from yeah. what I see. And it also showed a little bit of other people doing the same thing, you know, with Ray Liotta. He was in his head, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's very interesting to think about because you don't think about it. And like you said, if, you don't, if you're not aware of it when you're watching it, you might not see it from that perspective. You might just see an interesting movie. Right. But when you know what you're looking at, it's, yeah, it was awesome. Amazing. You say you saw it? Yeah, I saw it. And what did you get from it? Um, I, what I got from it was that just how, like, vicious our ego, or not our ego, the ego right. is. And the, the that's a very good, the ego is pure evil. Really, it's evil. No wonder people try to destroy one another. The ego, and that movie lays it out very well. The ego is evil. It really, really is. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, the, the, that, uh, the last, the, the scene where he was in the, uh, the elevator at the oh, end. Oh, yeah. That was, uh, that was pretty intense. And um, it just, I could kind of relate to it. You know? What was happening in the elevator, for those who don't know? Um, he was like, 
confronting his, his ego. Yeah. And he wasn't, but he could see it, and he wasn't backing down to uh, it. Right. Yeah. And the ego was tripping out. I know it had a fit, huh? Yeah. So there was this scene where he was finally getting, uh, he made up his mind that, uh, that he was going to finally look at the devil, look at the ego. And he, because prior to that, he was afraid to get on the elevator because the mind was telling him that something bad would happen. You know, some people are afraid to climb a ladder and all that. And the mind had been telling him that something bad was going to happen, so he was afraid to get, he would rather walk down a thousand steps than to get on the elevator. But because of the pressure, uh, the love that the two men showed for him, they really forced him to look, look at himself without him knowing that they were forcing him to look at himself. So near the end of the movie, he finally decided he was going to face the devil. You know how sometimes you go home and you sit quietly, you don't have music, and the devil just get busy telling you all these crazy things? Well, the devil went crazy on him. I mean, bouncing off the wall. It looked like he was bouncing off the wall of the elevator, but really in, in the mind, because the devil did not want to depart from him. The ego didn't. And he just stood there and looked at the devil, and it was hard for him to do it, but he did it anyway, and then the devil had to depart from him, and he was free. It was an amazing scene. I wish I had done that movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, was, <laughs> that was an amazing scene. Yeah. And that's what we have to do. I mean, when we, uh, when we give up anger by forgiving, now we have the light of God, and it's the light that's shining on that. And all you have to do is just see it. And the light is destroying the darkness. Because for all the years, we've been thinking that it was us. Yeah. And it's not us at all. And so the light was destroying the darkness. And when you learn, the more you learn to be still and not react and not overreact, that's going to happen to you too. That's the last part. Once you do that, uh, I can see the rain is gone. It's going to be that way. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> yes. You saw it? I did. Okay, then I'm coming to the hands, too. The first okay. time I saw it, I fell almost right to sleep. Oh, and <laughs> I didn't wake up until the very end. What a beta. <laughs> but the I, I woke up at the end, and that's when the doctors, you know, they had the, the doctors. I, I'm sorry talking. we have to talk about it, but I put it out there. Y'all haven't seen it, so. You're still going to like it, though. And that's what made me watch it over, because they were saying interesting things about the ego and that I've never heard any doctor say before, yeah. ever. Like what, do you remember giving us an example of that what they were saying? It, it's, um, uh, and I, not verbatim, but basically it's, it's the biggest trick or biggest lie played on, on humans. It's... it's they Basically, made, it is not you. They um, made your point, the point, too, that, just to add to it, your enemy is not outside of you. Your enemy is cleverly hidden within. Yeah. He is within. Now, there are enemies outside of you, inside of others, but they are only enemies because the devil is their enemy, too. They don't know it. But the enemy is hidden within. And to that point... Um, Ray Liotta, the, the, the guy he went and up, um, apologized to in the end, oh, yeah. he went crazy too. Because <laughs> he, he, he didn't, you know, he wasn't afraid of him. So he's, he just said, you know, I'm sorry for what I did. Here's your money back. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And, and the, the Ray Liotta had the, the gun on him and he was, he's trying to make him afraid of him. Yeah. But he wasn't afraid of him. So he, he literally went crazy in his, his own mind. That was a... M what did you think about that scene? Yeah, that was, that was intense. He was like crying almost. Take, that, take the mic. Yeah, yeah he was like... Sorry, uh, y'all miss it. I've been trying to warn you. <laughs> I said it all week on the radio. <laughs> oh, unless, did you see it? No. Nick told me you guys were going to go right and see it. And now Nick had to hide his... So what? Oh, you're familiar with Guy Ritchie? Oh, okay. Nice. Go ahead. Yeah, that the the Ray Liotta character was like uh, he was like crying almost. So, so there was this part where Ray Liotta went. <laughs> Liotta. 
Ryota, whatever. Leota. What? Leota. Leota. There you go. Leota was the guy in the bed or the guy yeah, that the was? the guy in the bed. Oh, well, this, the main guy went to apologize to him for resenting him in this scene, right? And that was, but go ahead. I'll tell you what I think about that in a minute. Yeah, and like the Ray Liotta character, he didn't know how to handle it. He didn't want the apology. Right. Yeah. He, he didn't want to be forgiven. He wanted fear. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He wanted him to fear him. Don't forgive, don't forgive me. I want you to fear me. Fear me. He wanted him to fear him. Isn't that amazing? Amazing. You know what that scene reminds me of is when we have to go and face our mother. And you know our mother, we're all afraid of mama. And we have to go and, and face her anyway. And then mama get mad because you're going to say, hey, I'm sorry for forgiving you. And I realize you couldn't help it. And instead of accepting that, mama get mad. What did I do? <laughs> Don't blame me. It's your daddy. That, that scene reminded me of that. The guy, and that's because mama wants you to fear her. That thing inside of her don't want you to be free. It wants you to fear her. That scene reminded me of that. And so that's why that guy couldn't accept it. He just wanted you. Because people know that when you resent them, you fear them. They know that. They know you have to be nice to try to get along with them. They know you have to lick boosts to get along. And so they want you to resent them so you would fear them. They have control over you. That reminded me of that. Did you see the same thing? Oh uh, yeah. Uh, Maybe not necessarily in like that, that way, but right. yeah, I, I've dealt with people that way. They want you to be, you go to to say a, to apologize to them. And they still manipulate yeah. and try to keep you under them. They don't. When people don't forgive you when you apologize to them, and they don't say, "Oh, okay, I understand. Thank you." It, they're telling you, "Uh-uh, don't forgive me. I ain't forgiving you." I need to have control. I need to feel like something. I need to feel important. So see you, and they see forgiveness as a weakness too. And, and if you forgive them, they're not going to forgive you because they want to control you. The ego is not them, but that's why they won't forgive. It's all devil. Isn't that amazing? Okay. I thought it was pretty interesting how they could make it all play out that way on a movie. Me too. That was pr pretty well done. It was laid out. If you don't see the ego and yourself in this movie, the Lord can't help you. <laughs> the Lord cannot help you. Okay. Right here, and then I'll come to you guys, all right? Because I saw these hands first. The, you saw the movie, right? I did, a okay. hundred times. Okay. Uh, the, the movie is kind of like, you know, it's a grown-up movie. Um, it's kind of like the movie called Fresh where a little kid is playing chess and he does some plotting. And uh, if you've seen Bruce Willis's movie, uh, The Sixth Sense, uh, you watch it after the third time, then you start seeing things. Uh, the movie is, 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 is that way. The elevator scene to me was the most powerful uh, thing, you know, because so he was locked up in prison, yet he didn't like to go in, a, he was locked up in solitary confinement for seven years, yet he didn't want to go into an elevator for a minute, and the biggest fear is when he stopped the elevator on the 13th floor, even though it didn't say 14th floor, it was between 14 and 11, because the elevators don't have a 13th floor, and he stopped, and all hell, all of his fears, he would actually have a conversation with evil, and uh, it would tell him, you're gonna do this, don't do that, you're going to do this, and if you don't do this, I'm going to kill myself. Put a gun to his head and blew his head off, but that was in his head. That was in his, the, 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 whatever was talking to him. So it's, 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 it is so powerful. It really the, is. The last thing. Did you uh, see it, Hassan? Oh. The, last, the, the therapist said in the, <laughs> the very last part, um, um, he said, we actually create a devil. We create a devil to, to uh, point at somebody else and blame them for whatever issues. But in reality, the, there is no devil. That person that's, make, that's pointing at the devil, blaming the devil, is the devil that's inside of you, the evil that is inside of you. And so that was the most powerful part to me. Amazing. 
Um, I, right here, yeah. So, um, the movie's great. I, I'd watched oh, you it. saw it? I watched it a while back, um, a few months back. Uh, and then you start, I remember someone in church brought it up, and then you started talking about it, and I was like, oh, I really want Jesse to watch this movie. I can't wait till he watches it. Uh, and then I seen on the, the live stream last week when I wasn't here that you started talking about it. I was like, hey, I'm not there. <laughs> but uh, it's a great film. Uh, I think Guy Ritchie does a good job of tying everything together at the end of his movie, so he did an excellent job with it on this one. There were a few things, I what guess What did you I, get from it, personally? Well, I think when you watch it, you know, with like eyes to see or when you're awake, it's, it, there's value in a lot of the messaging of what he's going through. Uh, and it helped me to understand kind of things I've been reiterating in church week after week. It's like, like he can't, like he can't overcome in the film until he completely like just gives up, right? Allows himself to have the fear wash over him. Obviously they want fear in the end from him because you know that fear is how they control him and the control is the thing that he's trying so hard to to navigate near the end so it's interesting how you know the scene he's talking about where he's facing all of that really like facing the the demon within himself he has to let go of what he views up until that point of himself uh, and he doesn't realize until it's over that like that wasn't him right and that's kind of the scary thing. To overcome, we have to, we have to submit and give up. And, and we think we're going to, right, it's going to, whatever we identify as, the not you, we think that it's going to destroy that which we think is us. And it's not until after that you can fully see, like, oh, that wasn't me at all. I should have never been afraid of that part of me dying off. Um, but I didn't enjoy the ending, unlike a lot of people. I, I don't like the doctors at the end of the credits, all that stuff. I think Why I don't, not? I don't need a, I didn't want to, or I guess I didn't enjoy a bunch of scientists or psych, like, like psychotherapists and things like that trying to explain away where the ego comes from. I didn't like that they were saying, oh, it's not the devil. It's just the devil within you. It's the same thing I don't enjoy about those kind of like new age religions where they're like you you are god you can make you can manifest it's like it's just the inverse of that so i don't enjoy the yeah that's the part that i disagree with too i think that's the uh what's the name of that fat guy to just sit there i i, I <laughs> what buddha. oh yeah. i think that's the yeah. buddha religion the buddha yeah i, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a, i don't you know i didn't know a lot about different religions. Mm -hmm. One time we were doing a show every Thursday or something about different religions, and people asked me about Buddha. And so I didn't know a lot about Buddha, except he was just fat and sat there and everybody wishing him. <laughs> and he didn't look like he moved. I can tell he wasn't exercising. He was overweight, right? <laughs> and, uh, he but... Booty on one of the Fallen Today episodes. <laughs> I did what? <laughs> and I didn't think that they believed in God or the devil, right? And so for that reason, and that guy, one of the guys did say that in the end of the movie. Uh, what was that guy's name? Deepak Chopra. Deepak yeah, Chopra. I don't, I don't like that guy. He is the one that said there is no devil. There is a devil. I, there is a devil. And it's the devil ego that made a home in us that we identify with as our own. And it's the devil that make us do the things that we wouldn't ordinarily do and don't want to do and prevents us from doing what we the things that are right that we want to do. There is a devil, and there exactly. is a God. Exactly. There is a devil, and there is a God. So I didn't agree with that part at all. Because if the devil wasn't making you do the things you want to do, you, God would be totally in charge of your life. You're not mm -hmm. on your own. You're not on, and that wasn't blaming somebody. It was, it was the truth. Mm -hmm. It's the devil. That, that's why we have to let that ego die. The devil got to depart from us. I, so I didn't agree with that part at all. I guess the ending, the, I guess the best way I could put it is the ending felt like a bunch of worldly people, intellectuals, trying to make a spiritual problem back into, after showing it so clearly, they try to take you off the mark of like, this is not a spiritual problem. It's a problem within you in this world that you got to solve by being focused on like something that you do. And it's not about submitting. It's about like, oh, you can fix it because you're the problem anyway. Oh, I see. 
So that was the only thing at the end. They, they tell this whole message is beautiful. And then it's almost like, if you don't make this movie, hold up. We're going to make sure at the end we put these people in here to kind of well, throw you off the set. Well, they seem to leave out God for some reason. I don't know why Buddha folks are into it like that. But you're right. Um, the part where the guy said it's the ego in us, and the reason people don't see it because the ego disguises himself as us. Mm -hmm. He disguises himself as our mind and our emotions. And, uh, and, and if you're not seeking, you won't know that. You really think that of you. That's why so many people mentally ill, they think that it's them and it's really, 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 really not you. It's the spirit that made a home in you. That's for sure and without a doubt. So there is a God and there is a devil. It's just for some reason, Buddha don't think so. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? And all his little people. Let me take this hand and then I, did I see your hand? Oh, okay. All right. Uh, I wanted to mention another movie. Uh, I think it's one of the greatest family movies ever made, Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> you know, when, when, when you go from that to death, I... Oh, no, no, but, but what I'm what saying, the... you know, about the ego, uh, it goes to the ego, you know, the, uh, everyone knows Mrs. Doubtfire, right? The movie, uh, the father dresses up as an old woman to be with his children because he goes through a divorce. Oh, and, I see. Right? You know, the woman uh, wants to divorce the man because uh, he, she's not happy with him. You know, she, she's too concentrated on work and stuff. The ego, right? That's what the ego is, right? right. She's too concentrated on work. And, but the children love their father. You know, they want to be with their father. You know, yeah. and, so he goes to great lengths to, he even transforms himself to be an old woman just to be with his children, right? What a beta, huh? What a be well, I mean, uh, that was the only way he could see them every day, you know? So, I mean, uh, I think that's, that's a nice movie, you know? It's, uh, but at the end, it, they <laughs> discover him and, you know, he's... Uh, uh, have you seen the movie the, yeah, I have that seen we it. were talking about? Oh, no, I haven't seen that one, no. <laughs> well, once you yeah. see it, there's no yeah. Yeah. simulation at all. Yeah. Not zero. But in, in the it's end, like the mother, about a, a when Disneyland she realizes, movie. Yeah. what? Yeah, in the end, when the mother realizes that uh, it was him, you know, they're in court, and uh, and then at the end. <laughs> no, but she, this is, there's yeah. no comparison. No? Oh, no. Well, I'm, oh, but the, yeah, well, you I'm hold talking on about to the ego. You know, the, oh, I see. You just She wouldn't about take him ego. back, but she, yeah. she gave him rights to the kids. But she didn't want to go back to him, you know. She didn't want to give him a second chance. Oh, okay. So that's what I'm saying. That the ego, you know, the woman's ego. Right. That right? is ego. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. You're right about that part. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, yeah. But thank yeah. you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did I see you here? Yes. Thank you, man. I understand the point you made, but you need yeah. to see the movie, and then you'll see there's no comparison. But that is a, an example of the ego yeah, when yeah. the mother tried to keep the children from the father. Absolutely. Yes. So, so as I've been listening to um, over like the week, the last week, a week and a half, you talking about Revolver. Speak up a little bit. Over the last week or two, when you were talking about Revolver and how deep it reveals like the ego. Yeah. I was thinking, um, you know how sometimes you say uh, the truth is so, it's so, once you see it, it's like it's really hard to explain because it's so simple. Yeah. I was listening to you on the radio and I and I and I had a that sort of like click. Yeah. And I saw some things in my life that were so plain that it's just no going back from now once yeah. you see it and it's enough just like you say to see it for to see what it is and then you don't even have to do anything about that. You you just change it. There's nothing it's you so have simple. to do or can do once yeah. you see it. Once you truly see it, not intellectually, yeah. but when you truly see it, you see that there's nothing, you, there's no need to do anything. And, it, and, it's, and it's so um, difficult to explain. Yeah. It's, almost, um, it's almost beyond simple to see the truth of God and what he's revealing to you. And, and I, one of the reasons for that, because people let the intellect get in the way yeah. and they don't know it. And the intellect is constantly interpreting with what's being said, whether you read the Bible or you, whatever you're doing, if you're not aware of the talking mind, which is the devil's mind, then you think that is you. And you think it makes sense. You think you have love when you don't. You think that's because the devil makes you think that. 
And if you haven't had that little separation, you don't know that, you don't know what you're talking about. It sounds like you know what you're talking about because the ego makes you think it's you. It is not. Yes, sir. I wasn't going to say anything, but oh, okay. since I got the mic. Well, you look like you're about to jump out. <laughs> no. Let me take this hand in here. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, my uh, best friend, he uh, doesn't believe in God, and he was like, he had to film at home, and I was like, oh, have you seen this? He goes, oh, I've seen it thousands of times. And as I explained it to him, I go, oh, do you know, see how the ego and how the evil and blah, blah, blah. He's like looking at me like, what are you talking about? Yeah. It's like, that's in the movie? I'm like, yeah, you did not see any of that? Yeah. I go, let's put it on. I, he puts it on. He goes, well, that was just a coincidence that it said the way you said it. I mean, <laughs> and he kept watching going, no, that's just a coincidence that it's like that. And I'm like, no, it's so clear. He didn't want to see it. No, he didn't want to. He's seen it thousands of times and yeah. never once ex even saw it the way I told him. I remember the first time I tried to watch that movie, it started out kind of slow. And so I'm like, I don't have time to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> but then I finally, because I had told the person on the show, I would, whomever called in about it, I would watch it. And I thought, I'm like, wow. And you don't want to watch it with anyone that talks. <laughs> you got to, either with a very quiet person, shut up kind of person, or alone. You don't want the phone to ring. You don't want any, it's so, it's so what we are all dealing with. It really is. And if you, in the end, if you go through the final, the scene in the elevator, you shall be free. If you ever decide that you're going to sit quiet, really, really, really take care of yourself, work on you, no matter what happens around you, if you ever truly work on yourself, you will get there. You will overcome this thing because God loves us and he's made the way for us. It's just that we forgot that and we have identified with this thing for so long. And we're so one with identities that we just don't realize it. But if you stay with us, stay with, even if you have to go into isolation, even if the whole world turns against you, give them the finger and you stay. You stay, become your own man, and you will be free. You really will. It will work. But you got to stay with it. And, you will, and life is so different when you become free. Once you become free, you will never have to worry doubt, uh, plan, all of your ideas will be taken away from you. All your ideas about God will be taken away. All your little identities will be taken away. You become a, this, this word free or freedom will have a real meaning once you become free. It has a different meaning. It's not just a saying. And you can live in this earth and the world going crazy. They said in the movie, one of the guys said that uh, to this uh, main character that <laughs> Nick has to pl plug his ears in because he doesn't want to hear it. And he have had to hear it all week. Poor Nick. He said that the world out there, this whole world, something, I forgot his exact word, but he said a little bit more like it's evil or it's other devil or something like that. That the world out there is an evil world. In essence, that's what he was saying. But if we overcome it, we can live in it. And we won't be something like that. I don't remember his exact word. But it has some deep points in it. Uh, let me just do this. Yes. So those of you who don't know what that term means, uh, the ego came from a man by the name of Sigmund Freud in the 1870s. He's the one that came up with the ego and the id. Uh, he discovered it and coined the name. And basically, it's well, the self. Well, we need self to go back to the real deal. It's the and devil. The inner self, the inner self with the voices <laughs> in it that we all have. And so I think one of the most powerful parts of the movie. But let me just comment on that. You, when you don't call it what it is, that's what happened to the world, make up words. And the words take away from reality of what we are dealing with, right? When I was growing up, I knew it was the devil. That's, and, and it is the devil. The Bible talks about the devil, right? But if you make up the word ego, you may forget that it's the devil in you. And unless you know what you're dealing with, you're not going to overcome it. That's one problem with words. It, it takes you away from reality. 
So he came up with the word for something that he wasn't really sure of to discover within himself. And so um, one thing about the movie, um, a blind person won't see anything, will see a boring movie, uh, but a seeing person will yeah. see the depth of it. And the last thing, you ever, uh, when you always say, go f forgive your mother, if you ever want to see an example of go forgive the person that you had resentment for, this man sat on his knees and almost licked his feet in repentance. I'm sorry for sorry. And at the time, the devil was telling him, what are you doing? Stop doing that. You, oh, you yeah. got this over here. Have dignity. Have courage. But he kept on. I'm sorry for doing this. And I'm sorry for doing that. I'm sorry for taking your money. And yeah. I'm sorry for doing that. Then he got up. And the guy, like the mother laying in sorry, the bed, was, was sitting there. Uh, <laughs> He couldn't believe it. But when he was starting to leave, that's when the elevator scene happened. And then after that, the man confronted him. And what happened to him, he got his courage back. He stood there face to face right. with that man. And uh, it was just, he had his courage back. Just like you say, forgive your mother, you have your courage back. This man forgave this person. He and, got his courage back. And to add to that, this person was real flamboyant. Yeah. What was his name? Yeah, he died. He did. He, he, yeah, he did. He died in real life, yeah. recently. Yeah. But he was real flamboyant in the movie, real light, just like a mama. So he really played the mama role. But he loved control, and he would go out, any of his enemies, he would go out and kill them, or get them killed because he just couldn't, oh, he just couldn't handle any rejection. He couldn't handle anyone making him look bad or anything. He would just go and kill you right away. So you like real mama. Um, oh, what a, there was this guy that was in the movie that wasn't in the movie. You remember the woman scene that played that, that woman that pretended she represented some guy that did not exist? Mr. Gold. What? Mr. Gold. Mr. Gold. So there's this guy that's supposed to be in the movie called Mr. Gold, right? And Mr. Gold was supposed to be a bad guy. And everybody was afraid of Mr. Go. And so, but nobody had never seen Mr. Go. And so whenever you went to talk to Mr. Go out of fear or try to kiss up at him to get along with him, they would always send a woman down to represent Mr. Go. And, Mr. and this woman seemed like she was all tough, trying to act all mean and had glasses on and <laughs> with a bunch of other women behind her and acting all tough, right? And, and so they met with this flamboyant guy because he was trying to, he was scared of Mr. Go, afraid of Mr. Go because he'd never seen Mr. Go. So he met with him and, and, and this woman intimidated him so bad that he freaked out and he went off on her and, and she said something like, okay, when we come back, that's going to be it for you. And the devil like, oh, they're going to kill you. What are they going to do? And he freaked out, and he went to apologize or try to kiss up at her. And, and in reality, there was never a, a Mr. Go. He never existed, except in their mind. They made up a lie about this tough guy that did not exist, and everybody was afraid of this guy that did not exist. And that, that all came. And that's the devil, too. That's how the devil operates in the mind. The devil has no power. He's been defeated. He only has an illusion. And if you believe the illusion, thinking that it's you, then he will destroy you. You got to overcome the devil, but you need the power of God to do that. You need the love. You need the light. Because the devil is busy. The people in the world today are depressed. I, I talk with people all the time. They are afraid. They are lonely. They're comparing themselves and everything because they have the devil. They have identified with the devil. Even Christians who think that they have identified with God have not. They identify with the devil, thinking that they have identified with God, and they don't have sense enough to look at themselves, really pay attention to see that if I identify with God, what, how come I feel afraid? Why do I still have worry? Why am I still this and that? They won't examine it. They won't question it. And that's what the problem is. Learn to question what's going on with you. God don't mind that. If you question, he'll, he'll answer for you. 
he will answer. So don't, don't be afraid to question things, especially going on with you. That makes sense? Okay. Let me take, let me take here, and then I come here. And then I, will, I have a question. Did you have your hand? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. This movie you talk, uh, talk about, Revolver, right. it reminds me of an episode of The Twilight Zone called Nervous Man in a Four Dollar Room. This man, uh, this uh, in it, this man would uh, feel he has to commit a crime because he uh, it's the only way to keep himself alive. But he, uh, <clears throat> but he was uh, only, he was forced to face himself, self uh, 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 single uh, in single uh, r uh, room. Where a question, uh, he, where he dared question. I so think it's kind of hard to compare this movie to other movies if you haven't seen it. Yeah, uh, the yes. points I kind of see what you were saying, but this is a little different than those kind of movies. That's why I like it so much. It's hard to find another movie to compare it to for me at least. Even though there are other movies out there with the ego thing going on for sure, but like it's kind of hard to compare this. Am I wrong about that? I think every movie has a little bit of a plot to it and right. drama and ego comes into play, but this movie showcased the ego. Yeah, it does. It's all about that, as a matter of fact. Because these three guys was in prison, as Francisco mentioned, and they, and they wanted a shorter time in prison, so they went into isolation. If you go to prison, you stay in isolation, you get out quicker if you were to be amongst the, uh, the rest of the inmates. And being in isolation for that whole time, seven years, I think, they, they were not allowed to talk to anyone, see anyone, play with anyone or anything. And so it forced them to have to look at themselves. And by looking at themselves, they became wiser. And so this, this primary guy in the movie, he would put in after these other two guys were already there. So they had learned how to chess play and they really learned about, they deeply learned about the ego because they were by themselves for seven years. Can you imagine spending seven years by yourself? You can't even spend seven minutes by yourself. You got to get the iPhone or something to go in your ears because you cannot have that time. And that's the devil in you and you don't realize it. Yeah. But, so it's hard to compare, Raymond. I understand it. Yes, sir. Uh, you mentioned earlier about Mr. Gold, whatever, a made-up person, right? Uh, there's another movie called Fight Club that everything that happens there, it's all in his head. Oh, yeah, I remember you that. Know, yeah, I don't want to go into right, detail, no. but that's another movie about the ego. Yeah. That, you know, it's all in your head, folks. Yeah. It's in your, one of the guys said in the end of the movie, it's all the imagination and the feeling. Mm -hmm. So if you can learn to... Let the ego just go through what it got to go through. And the devil be, oh, I always just mentioned this. So this guy went to forgive. And uh, while he was standing there trying to tell this guy, hey, I'm sorry for resenting you. I'm sorry for taking your money. I'm sorry. Uh, this, the guy on the bed didn't want to hear it because he wanted people to fear him. But the devil was talking to the guy that was doing the forgiving. He was like, oh, he being a beta. He being weak. And the guy was like, oh, no. The devil, because he's so accustomed to the devil. It was hard for him to do it, but he did it anyway. And that's when he became free. He, he was able to do the rest. But it was hard for him to forgive because the devil was telling him he was being weak. He was being afraid. And he could hear the devil talking to him. He could barely speak, but he did it anyway. Before you enter into the kingdom, you must forgive. Otherwise, you don't have the power to overcome the devil. You don't have help. That makes sense? But you must forgive. Then just do the silent prayer and watch. Pray and watch. And you'll grow away from the ego. All right. Did I see another hand? Yes, sir. Real fast. I have a... Oh, I'm sorry. Let me tell you. I saw this one first. Isn't it? Yeah. A minute ago, I said this movie showcased the ego, but maybe the better way to put it is that this movie was made about the ego. 100% about the ego. Everything that we've been talking about, you see it in there. It's all in there. Except the part about God and the devil. They don't mention the devil, God. But it's the devil. It really is. What? 
Okay, one last question. So this man was imprisoned. He voluntarily took half the time. <laughs> Instead of the seven, 14 years, he took seven right. years. I, I just so, said that. So he was surrounded by two Did guys. One guy. What? Yeah. Yeah, for the oh. people for not for you. The people uh, so he the cell on one side of the cell was a was a an extreme con man and the other side of the cell was a chess, was a master chess man. Right. And uh, you could not communicate. And so they would send signals with a book and and so um, that's how it kind of went. Oh, well thank you. Did you say master chess man? Master chess. chess. So, how many uh, individuals we have here? You are an independent individual person. Let me see the hands. You had your hand? Okay. So, what? You're an independent person. Individual, right here. You had your hand, right? I said that I don't really know if this is a trick question or not. Oh, you did? <laughs> but um, I try to stay away from labels and words like boss woman, independent woman, independent boss, or like anything putting myself above others. I try to, because I'm naturally, you know, nice. got that from Mama, so. Nice. Amazing. I don't know if I could say that I was that. Okay. Uh, this young lady here in the blue. You're an independent person. And then I'm coming down here, too. Um, I don't know. I'd have to think about it <laughs> for a minute. but. Um, Do you know what that is? Could you help me out a little bit? <laughs> what, so like, that I mean, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I will, too, because I want you to be that way. So I'll, I'll explain it more. Yeah, yeah. Like Shyam was saying, I kind of try and stay away from the word independent woman, especially with the way that society pushes that kind of characteristic. Um, so I don't know. Okay. All right. Right here. Right now. So you, you're an individual? Did you raise your hand? Yes. And what does that mean? How do you know that you are? That you can stand on your own. Well, I've always been told that I've been independent. Like my mom tells me that I taught myself how to use a restroom, which I don't know if that's true, but she always says that. So, but it just means you can stand on your own. And go to the bathroom? No, that was like I was a baby. That's just a story. But like, stand on your own, like, um. <laughs> no, I know. I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay. Did you have your hair? I did. You are an independent, independent, Individual. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That you can stand alone. What does it mean to stand alone? Like you don't need a friend. Okay. All right. What? Did you have your hair? Mm -hmm. You are an um, independent person. Individual. You, meaning that you can stand alone. Yeah. And. How do you know that? What does that mean to you? Um, I've never been a part. I've never felt like I related to everybody else. Not a groupie. It means not being a groupie. Uh, not being having to be a part of a group. You can be by yourself. You can be alone. You can have your own way of thinking. Or um, when you hear something, you investigate it for yourself or you look, up, look it up for yourself. For example, like I was... Um, <clears throat> I love I didn't your shirt, know. by the way. Thank you. What a nice I didn't know a, a lot about Donald Trump before he became president. I just knew he was a millionaire. And then I heard people around me saying, oh, he's bad, he's racist, he's this, he's that. And so one day I just sat down and I started looking at old videos, old right uh, videos of him, interviews and stuff like that. And I'm like, every time he opens his mouth, he says America is great, he loves America, and now he's the president. Like, so, and that really, and then hearing you talk about it, that made me, but that's just an example of me not going along with everybody else because sometimes it's easy to do that if you're not an individual you don't stand yeah. on your own beliefs you can you hear something that somebody else says and you go along with it and you don't even really know what you're saying <laughs> that's right that's amazing yeah did you have your hair okay you are an individual i would actually say i'm not you're not and how do you know you're not 
because, okay, so over the past few years, in the past, I used to be more of a group person. <coughs> like, I wouldn't want to say things that would go against what the group believed or thought or whatever. Right. Uh, I feel like I'm becoming more of an individual in that I'm, like, telling people things that I believe, even if I know they will disagree. Like, I, I actually lost a couple friends over the, uh, the Roe v. Wade thing that just happened because I was posting memes like how I was for it. Nice. And, <laughs> and they, were, they were not happy about that. Yeah. Um, but I would say I was, I'm still not an individual because I still need a group. You know, like, if I, if I go somewhere and, like, everyone's attacking me because they don't agree with me, they think I'm evil, whatever, um, I still need to, like, go back to people who do agree with me, like, oh. to, to, like, make sure that I'm, like, still grounded, like, I otherwise I start to feel like I'm going crazy, like, and uh -huh. um, I, I felt like even if I got rid of that part of me, I would still need, like, God, then, like, I would have to go to scripture or, or like, or do the silent prayer or something like that to keep me from going crazy, so I don't think I could actually be on my own in that Very way. Very good point, man. Um, so you feel grounded... <laughs> You feel grounded when you go around a lot of other people. Let's say this group is against you. Then you get with another group that tend to be, seem to be okay with you. You yes. feel grounded when you're with a group. Yeah, because... Uh, what does that feel like to feel grounded? I guess that um, my ideas are not wrong. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, I don't feel like I'm crazy because other people agree with me and they can articulate the arguments that I'm making. Very and they, like, interesting, man. Me in that way. Well, I'm glad you see what's going on with you mm -hmm. so clearly because as we talked about earlier, seeing it is what's going to make the change. You're not in denial about what's happening in here. Mm -hmm. That's where the change is going to come from. That's amazing. Uh, individuals, right here. How did, uh, okay, I'll come over there in a minute, man, in the back. Uh, how do you know you're an individual? What does that mean? Well, um to start, I wouldn't say I, I don't, as you put it, I don't name and claim the individual label. But to answer the question clearly, like, yes, I am an individual. Uh, I guess for me that means, like, I don't live my life seeking the approval of anyone else. I don't voice my opinions seeking the approval of anything or anyone else. I don't even live seeking the approval of, I guess, of, like, God. I just try to live in the right way because like I can't finesse God anyways if I think I'm going to pull the wool over God's eyes like I'm going to get caught you know he's going to know so I don't there's no point in me trying to get caught up in this idea of like I I create myself as an individual I just live knowing that I don't need the approval of any outside anything I'm just going to exist in this moment and, and okay let go of it amazing yes sir I saw the hand way in the back of it. A few days ago, I was at my uh, close friend's house, and uh, we were talking, you know, I mentioned you, and uh, he just asked, like, was I into, you know, religion and all that. And I was like, nah, not really. It's just this guy that uh, named Jesse, you know, Lee Peterson or whatever. And I started telling him about you, how you said, you know, it's good versus evil, you know, right versus wrong and all that. And we got into politics a little bit. And basically, his whole family is Democratic. They, you know, like Joe Biden, Barack Obama, all of that. And um, you know how lately the prices, gas prices and all that have been going up. You know, yeah. everything's been going up and stuff. And uh, we were talking about it, and uh, he was just like, one of my friends, he was like, well, it's all Donald Trump's fault. And I was like, what the? Like, <laughs> he's not even president anymore. Like, how? <laughs> I didn't, it didn't make any sense to me. And then, you know, his dad comes home. He was coming home from, like, a, a boat party or something like that. We started talking and stuff. And um, he was telling me about, like, this guy. Uh, he was just, like, you know, they were, you know, drinking and all that. And he was just, like, this Irish guy. He said, you know, he was saying the N-word and he hated Mexicans and all that type of stuff. And, you know, I was just telling him about, you know, I don't necessarily believe in racism. You know, I think, you know, it's just evil people. You know, they just, they don't know. They don't see, basically. And um, he basically was saying, oh, racism exists. Like, it's everywhere. And he mentioned, you know, there's still Nazi parties here, you know, in America and all that. And I was like, I didn't think he was serious. I thought it was, like, joking or something. <laughs> and he was, like, so just grounded on that. He was grounded on hating Trump, hating the Republican Party, hating, you know, the whole, you know, if it isn't Joe Biden and the Democrats, then he hated him. And you I was know, just, I didn't understand that because yeah. everything they were saying, it was almost like a replica of what 
politician, the Democratic Party, the politician, what they all say, you know, racism exists, it's everywhere, you know, white I'm people done with rallies yeah. because of that. Because I realize, especially looking at what's going on now, rallies are just egos fighting one another. If you really, really pay attention, this side is mad because this side believe this, this side is mad because this side believe this, and all they do is devils argue with one another. But, and that, that gets you nowhere. And so I realized, wow, I didn't know that that's what rally was all about. There are better ways to get involved, run for office, vote out the people you don't want in there. It's better way to have more of a, to be more productive than just, it's like being with friends and all you're doing, arguing with one another, trying to prove something, right? It's just the same thing in these rallies. It's just all about egos. It's not about what is right, and it's not about really solving the problem. It's just about getting what you think you want, whether it's right or wrong. That's what the ego is all about. So you make a good point with that, man. Last point, and then I got to move on. I just wanted to say, uh, it just sounded kind of all brainwashing, basically. It is. And I was so stern. 100%. So stern on everything I was saying. I was just like, it doesn't exist. Like, you know, they will turn, but, you know, they'll turn on you if you don't agree with them. You know, that, Black Lives that's Matter right. and all that. And I was just stern. So They would know. turn on you. As soon as one devil disagrees with the other devil, the devil you follow is going to turn on you. That's what devils do. And people don't even question that. Well, if this person turn on this person, what made them not turn on me if I ever disagree? Or, you know what I'm saying? You got to start thinking for yourself. It's a spiritual battle. It really is. All right? Start thinking for yourself. Yes, sir. You know, thinking for yourself, being an individual. Um, I have family member that I cannot talk to because uh, they've been emotionalized by TV and the Democrat Party. And everything is a trigger word in anything that's conservative. Yeah. So I can't talk to my family members. I cannot talk to friends at work. They literally go crazy if you just say, you know, Trump. Yeah. And so uh, <laughs> I have to show love because if I mention it, then I'm the one that's being emotional and egotistical. And so you show patience. love by being quiet? I shut my mouth like I'm doing right now. What a baby. <laughs> okay, let me take this guy first. Are you an individual? And then I'll tell you why I'm asking this. Uh, I really don't understand the question that much because if you, if you, individual means one solo, right? And I've heard atheists say that before, so... Um, I try Ethan, you said that they are individual? Yeah, they'll be like, I'm an individual, I don't need nobody, I don't need no God, I don't need this and that. Oh. And uh, I'm not trying to you know, derail nobody that's an individual, but uh, I, it just stuck to me that if somebody believes that, they're truly like, they don't, they're just on their own. Uh, so you don't know if you're an individual or not? I, I would say no, because I really need God in my life, because he keeps me on that straight and narrow. You need God? Yes. Oh, okay. And to me, if I need God, I'm not, I'm not an individual. I'm his servant. Okay. So that's Amazing. how I see it, yeah. All right. Last word. Are you an individual? Yes. And how do you, what does that mean? To allow other people to not be individuals. And it ties in. You said to allow other people to not be individuals? Yeah, so it ties into like my answer to why I love July 4th, like, and the biblical question. All, it's all one thing. And Revolver, and I ain't even seen it, but um, it's like 4th of July is like, or the freedom of the country, it's like enough to. When you love the country for the values, like you say, God, country, family, freedom, when you truly love it, you love it enough that the country almost gives you the love to love the people who hate it. Because you can love them because they have the freedom to hate it. Yeah. That's the beauty of America. And America is like God in that way. Because when you love God with all your heart, soul, and might, along with nothing else, he gives you the love to not judge the people who don't love him. And that's the beauty of it. You can go ahead, hate America. America gives you that freedom and love to do that. Yeah. And you that's make a good point. I was thinking, just to add to it, I was thinking the other day about 
I was thinking like I was born in America, right? And so America is my home. It's like I was born in this house. This is my home. So it, it reminded me of the house I live in. I love my house I live in. You know, I love where I live, right? And just because somebody else come by my house and don't like my house, I'm not going to say, oh, I hate my house too. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And so if I'm born in this country, how can I not love the country I was born in? Mm-hmm. It's like, it's crazy. But you can convince people that were born in the country to hate the country. It's like coming to your house for a vacation. They can, by the time the vacation is over, you want to move with them. Because they are convinced you, your house is such an awful house. I don't like living here kind of mess. What a mess, huh? And, the mindset of people. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and it's like that saying, I don't know who said it, JFK or whoever, like, not what your country could do for you, but what you could do for your country. Yeah. It's like, that's what we can, that's the only thing that we are able to do even for God. Like when you were saying, oh, people always say, I'm doing this for the kingdom. The kingdom don't need you. Like, that's right. But, but they do a favor for the kingdom. What the? Yeah. But what we can be is the example of an American so that people who hate America can see the light of people who do love America and yeah. be the example. The Very same, good point. The same way atheists, they can see someone who is of God as the example. Yeah. And you don't have to, you know, judge them or hate them for not being that. But also, real quick, too, now that I know that the revolver has to do with Deepak Chopra, because uh, you guys mentioned it, uh, I do know Deepak because my father used to uh, show me him when I was little. And Deepak's like Tupac. They were close. They kind of understood it, but they got a little bit of still confusion uh, in there. But... Um, her Deepak seemed weak. Yeah, he is because he's he, like a nice. Oh, and it's the same with Pac. But <laughs> they they planted the seed at least to where like now when I see someone like you, it it reminds me of all those things that my father showed me about Deepak because it was close. And um, but I just want to say in the point of Revolver when you mentioned the feelings and everything, it's almost like I think about like in the world, right, we'll get like managers, especially in like the music world, we get managers, agents, a manager to watch the manager, uh, (laughs) like all these different things. And we think we're building a force field to protect us. And that's what we do with the feelings and the ego. But actually we realize, we wake up one day, realize we built a prison. Absolutely, oh, that's deep. That's exactly what you're doing. and, And we're not protected by anything. We're just in prison now by the feelings, egos, or handlers, or stuff like that. Oh, and real quick, I want to say this too. <laughs> real last thing. Um, and when, when you don't judge people for hating the country or hating God or whatever, um, uh, people, because people call me this all the time, like a sociopath or something like that. Because they'll be like, man, we just argued about all this stuff, and now you want to still go to the movies or something like that? And I'm like, yeah, because I don't, I don't hold nothing That's personal. Right. Yep. And when you really are that, you're able to do that. Absolutely. And to them, it seems crazy because yep. they've, they're so attached to the feelings. That's anyway, deep. Yeah. That is so true. <laughs> and to add to that, stop trying to control anything. Mm-hmm. As of this day, never, ever, ever try to control. You're not in control of anything. Mm-hmm. Just think about that. You're not in control of your own life. You're not in control of other people's lives. You're not in control of anything. It's only the, the devil's nature that makes you think you can control. Everything going to change anyway. People are going to change. Everything going to change. And if you think you're in control, then you're going to fall apart. Just live. Just be. And let things be. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just let it be. And, and don't try to protect anything. People are going to think and say and do what they want to let nobody like anybody know how. Right? So just you, like what he was saying, you be. Don't try to control anything. Really, you'll be much happier. Much happier. Let me just hear, are you an individual real fast? And what does it mean to you if you're not or if you are? I would say that I'm an individual compared to like society, but I need God, so I don't know if I'm fully alone. Are you willing to stand alone? Yes. You are willing to stand alone? Well, I don't know if, not necessarily though, actually, because I'm not standing alone. Like, I have the Father. 
So I'm not technically alone. Okay. Amazing. So um, let me just say this about individual. Unless you become an individual, you would never know God. You would never know him at all. You got to have nothing or nobody to rely on. No thing, nobody. Because anything you put before him and you want to hold on to it, control it, uh, find comfort in it or hate it or anything, then that's your God. And you would never know God. You know about him, you read about him, you hear about him, right? When I was growing up, I was like an individual didn't even know it. I remember as a kid, just kind of speaking my mind, right? And I remember when my aunt told me once, boy, your mouth going to get you in trouble. Because I, I had told her something about herself. I disagreed with her or something. <laughs> and she's like, your mouth going to get you in trouble. And I was the same way in school. You know, my family members tell me I was that way growing up. Cause I kind of forgot about it. And there is nothing in me that would allow me to follow the crowd. Even if I tried, I couldn't do it. Really. And in the good old days when boys were boys and men were men, men and women were that way. They, the women were like that too. They were individuals. Now that didn't mean they didn't hang out with people or, or this, but they would not follow the crowd. They would not gossip about people or hate folks or or think like the crowd. They knew if you thought like the crowd, something was wrong. With that, they're like, oh, that prayer ain't got no sense. They sound just like JoJo. You know what I mean? There's nothing in me that will allow me to follow the crowd. It's just not there. And in today's society, just today's society is one of the weakest society I've ever seen. It's the weakest society I've ever seen. Because, and I'm sure it's because you weren't brought up to be individuals, be strong. Individuality doesn't mean you don't get along with people, you know, you just don't get a sense of identity from anybody or anything. That's why I didn't understand how people allow others to be their gurus. Because I'm like, how do they let somebody be a guru over them, you know what I'm saying? That person, they're not able to separate the message from the person. Even Jesus Christ had a problem with that. The people couldn't separate the message that Jesus brought from Jesus. So they called him God. And that's why Jesus stayed on the road running away from people. Because he saw that they were getting the wrong impression. They were getting the wrong identity of him. He kept saying, my father sent me. I have a message for you. Here's the way back home to the father. But they made Jesus God. Now you can't even convince most of them that Jesus is not God. But you got to be, I was, and what really made me think about this, I counsel with a lot of people, and I, I realized, wow, we have a weak society. And the men are as bad as the, the women are stronger than the men nowadays. The men act like the women, and they, don't, and they act like they don't know they're acting like a woman. Huh? Then they blame the women. Then they blame the women. The men don't act like they know they're acting like women. Check yourself. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But we have a very weak emotional society today. And there are few people, or very few, who are willing to stand alone. And, and, and know what's right, see what's right, and just stand alone. Okay, you don't like me, fine. I wish you were. As what Sarnia said, you still love them. You don't hate them. But you got to be strong. The only way you got to become strong, you got to pull away from the crowd and allow yourself to go through that ego death. Because your parents haven't taught you to be strong. And so you don't know what it's like. Because kids are strong by themselves when they first start to grow up. Kids will tell you what's on their mind. If you don't want to play with them, fine. They ain't going to be mad at you. You know what I mean? Have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. And we, you have to be like little children. Yeah. yeah. And somebody fat, they say, Mama, why is that person fat? You know what I'm saying? And, and that's without hate. It was our judgment. But men, y'all supposed to be a little different than the woman. <laughs> I know your mama, but still, some to say, well, why am I acting this way? 
But we have a weak society. I was talking to a young lady yesterday, and she was in her early 20s, and she was a true individual. She couldn't help it. And I knew about the way she explained things, her personality. You can tell when you run into a real individual. You gotta, and, and that doesn't mean, again, it doesn't mean you, you're not going to go out and have fun and go to the beach and go to the, the Wallamilla Patch and, you know, different places. You ever been to a Wallamilla Patch? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you have not lived until you've gone to the Wallamilla Patch and you broke the Wallamilla open right there and started eating it. And eat the heart of it. It is so good. But anyway, <laughs> if you are afraid to be an individual, then let that fear happen so you can overcome it. That's the ego death. If you're afraid to stand alone, make sure you stand alone because it's not you that is afraid. It's not you. You're worried about what people are going to think. I'm not going to have any friends. I'm not, my family members don't like me. Or oh, I'm going to lose this and lose that. That's not you. That's the ego in you, the devil's nature. The real you is not afraid to stand alone. The real you don't go from group to group to group to try to get an identity. It's the not you that's doing that. And if the whole world turn against you, you have no problem because, as someone just said, God is with you. And you know it because your ideas of God disappear. And so you now know the real God. And, you, and God will be with you just as the devil is with you now because you know the devil somewhat. You think you're the devil, but you know the devil, but you don't know God because you've been listening to the devil for so long and you learned about God and you think you know God. But you will know him once you face all of your fears and all of your words. Let it happen. Don't protect anything. Let it happen. And as in the movie, the devil will be trying to convince you to protect that. Oh, what's going to happen? Oh, you're weak. Oh, you're this and that. Let that happen anyway. That's not you. Really, it's not you. That makes sense a little bit? Mm -hmm. Anybody that, that doesn't make sense with? Let your fears and your worries and yourself, let it happen. Don't protect the devil any longer. Really, stop protecting the devil. You can't control anything. You're not in control of anything. Whatever you try to control is controlling you. You get a sense of identity from it. And that's why you can't live. So let it happen. That's not you with the stuff that you're protecting. It's not you at all. All right? Yes, sir. Yeah, I was once part of this uh, support social group where... Everybody was always talking about how friendly everyone was and how they were all part of each other's support and they needed each other. And then I kept saying, like, I, I spoke to a, finally a smart, real, real individual who's, I said, how come nobody wants to be my friend? Like, what's going on here? And he goes, Paul, it's because you don't want to be friends with these people. And then I was like, oh, that's right. You know, that's right. that is a totally right. Why did I just get fooled by that idea I'm that sick I wanted of these to support be. group thing. You don't want anyone to support your ego. If somebody supports you, get away from there real fast. That's your enemy. Really, that's your enemy. You don't want that. You don't want an out of support thing. You want to find what's inside of you by overcoming this and that. All right? Amazing. Uh, Real fast, last word because of time yes. here. Go ahead. Uh, earlier, Hassan mentioned that what makes America great, one of the things that makes America great is uh, that people who hate the country have the freedom to express it, right? But what happens when we let those people grow in number? You know, and then you mentioned too that we shouldn't stand for any, we shouldn't uh, protect, you know, but we should protect the country, right? So yeah. that's how civil wars start. I mean, I think this country's on the verge of a civil war, or some states are probably going to secede because of what's going on, you know, so... Well, uh, what I, everything that's happening inside of you, your mind and emotions, mm -hmm. that's what's happening inside of everybody else. I want you to know that. Everybody in the world is dealing with exactly the same mindset and emotion. It's of the devil. 
And that's why you have all this stuff going on in the world. The government, the people in the government think like you do. And so if you are trying to overcome it, they are not. And so they are building a bigger mess to make the ego feel better so they can feel better, they think. But when you're around human beings, just know, I don't care what act they put on, just know they're going through, the devil got them too. Even though they try to hide it and dress it up inwardly, they're miserable. Just, you can test it, but just know that. So as of this day, stop protecting the not you. Whatever you're afraid of, whatever the devil is telling you, face it. Be still and let it happen. Don't protect the devil anymore, and you'll be free. And he's going to do to you what he's doing to those guys in the movie. He's going to tell you all kinds of things to try to get you to protect the devil, him. Because he doesn't want to die, and eventually he will depart and go make a home in someone else. He will depart. All right? That makes sense? So here's what I got to do because I'm telling y'all. The biblical question from this week, um, do you keep the greatest commandment? And so I just want to ask the new people, since they haven't had a lot of input, so I can wind this down. Do you keep the greatest commandment? Um, I think I do. And what is the greatest commandment? <laughs> um, the greatest commandment, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, it's uh, love God over, love him over everything and your neighbor as yourself. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so you love God? Yes. And you love your neighbor? Correct. And how do you know you do? What's uh, about you that says that you do? Um, I, I don't know, but I know that's, <laughs> that's how I have to be. Right. You read that, and you know that's how you should be, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. And so do you, are you that way now? I, I am that way. I try to... Uh, but you to just said you didn't know. What the? Well, I, I treat people the way I want oh, okay. to be treated. And how is that? Well, not mean, not evil, not... Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it, it comes without any effort. You know, this is this the way this should happen. Okay. I just go with it. Interesting. Do you love God? You, you keep the greatest commandment? Yes. Do you have anger? Sometimes, sometimes I don't. And what can get you angry sometimes? Having to get off the video games. <laughs> That'll do it. Yeah. So next time your dad or grandfather or whomever tell you, get off the video game, instead of getting mad about it, just say, oh, okay. Yeah. And just get off. I'm working on it. Right on. <laughs> Do you keep the greatest commandment? Uh, I try to. And what is it, and how do you try to? I know it's uh, treat others as you want to be treated, um, as you would like to be treated in pretty much every moment. So and I do make an attempt at that, but I'm not sure exactly my motives as to why. I'm, why do I feel like I want to be treated this way? So I treat others that same way. It makes me question. Oh, you treat others the way you want to be treated? Yes. Uh, and give me an example. Well, um, holding the door open for someone. Um, if somebody like nods to me, even if I don't want to say like hi back, I'll give them that acknowledgement oh. because I know that I would feel slighted if I nodded to somebody and they didn't <laughs> nod back to me. I guess that's an example. That's weak. <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree. That's all ego. Mm. Really, and I, under, I totally understand what you're saying, mm -hmm. but that's not loving anyone. And I think that's why I'd say, like, I'm, I'm questioning what my motives are for why I want to be treated that way. Yeah. Is it so trying to do that makes me see myself a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and, and keep your eyes on that, too. Watch everything you do and see the motive behind it. And you will see that it's all about you, the ego. Mm -hmm. You want something back. You hold the door open so you can seem nice. Or you hold the door open because you want someone to be that way with you. And that's just all ego. I agree, yeah. That's not I guess love. I'm learning that, yeah. And it's definitely not loving God. Mm. So to love God, with, I mean, to uh, keep the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, soul, and might, along with nothing else, nobody else, or nothing else. And you would naturally love everybody else without even trying, without even thinking about it, because you love what's right. You love God. You love the truth. You love God. And no matter what happens, you can never not love that person or those people. There's nothing they can do out there because you know that they can't help it. They can't see your family members, your, anybody. But you, you got to love God first. You can't put anything else on any, your wife, your children, your husband, 
your friend, your cat, your dog, your money, nothing can be go before that. And so watch yourself to see what's important to the ego. Because those things that seem important to you are really important to the ego. You have identified with that. It's not you. And that has to die. And, and, and in closing, it ain't easy. It's not easy to let the ego die. Because you so identify with it, you think it's you. I used to think the same thing. I thought it was me. It's not. It sounded like me. It felt like me. But it's not. So you got to let, let that happen so that you can die from it. So keep your eyes on yourself. Stay with you. Again, it doesn't mean you don't hang out, right? If you want to. But don't be... Don't look to any other source for your help. Even when we fellowship, we're fellowshipping. We're edifying one another. We're not trying to get something from one another. I learned so much from you guys. You have no idea. I listen closely. And so I can learn from it, right, without trying to learn intellectually. Don't hold on to anything. So stop protecting the ego. The real you have no fear. You have no doubt. You have no worry. It's the not you. you the real you are not looking for a friend. The real you're not looking for a husband or a wife. The real you're not looking for anything. That's the ego you. That makes sense? So, and, and just stay on it. You'll be guided in the right way, but you got to stay on it. And don't take anything personally. They can't help it. Just like you can't help yourself, they can't help it. Everyone must be born again in order to know God. Every, not one human being. And I'm telling you, every human being dealing with the same devil. Don't believe it when they say they're not, they're lying. It's the same devil. All right? Anyway, brand new biblical question. Brand new. If you lose your insanity, who would you be? If you lose your insanity, who would you be? That's a new biblical question. Amazing, huh? The guy in the green shirt wanted to tell me who he would be if he loses his sanity. <laughs> I have no idea. Isn't that amazing? I have no idea. Amazing. Who would you be if you lose your insanity? God's right hand man. God's right hand man. Amazing. <laughs> Interesting. I can't, I'll put my little two cents in next week, next Sunday, but interesting. What does it mean, God's right hand man? He'd give me like second in power and command to, <laughs> to punish, punish the wrong from the right, you might say. Uh, interesting. I mean, just the way I see it, but I could be wrong. Okay. Or, or forgive the, the, the people that are wrong. Forgiveness, more forgiveness in the world, you know. Uh, That's what's missing, too. We need love in this world. But we need strong Christianity love, not the fake love. You're absolutely right. But I'll put my little two cents in on Sunday. Hey, if, we, if you lose your insanity, who would you be? <laughs> uh, it seems like a trick question. <laughs> 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 uh, um, I like. I kind of like that guy's answer. Um, it would be who you're supposed to be, I guess. Have you ever thought about that? If I became sane, who would I be? <laughs> Anybody ever thought about that? Oh, yeah. The whole world is insane, right? Yeah. If I ever became sane, who would I be? Isn't that like a good question? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So smoke on it. Yes, who's saying? Who's saying? Who's saying? I know. Real fast. Okay. I'm so out of I just wanted to edify what he was saying. I wasn't saying that necessarily that's what makes the country great, but it's the ability, like in it's other countries. edify, clarify. Oh, uh, well, I kind of. But you like, want to edify in your. And I, like, and I like that word, yeah. I like that too. Um, <laughs> uh, but because in other countries, you know, you get your head cut off if you go against the country or you go against the beliefs. The ability of America to be that way, just like God doesn't force you to love him. 
you know, he'll let you suffer. So if you want to hate it, you can hate it. But to be the light of the example so that people can see it is the, is the ability. And just real quick to answer it, the new one, you'd finally become you. Okay. I'll put my two cents in next week. Amazing. So, well. you, you mentioned that you were going to tell us something amazing, important. You had a special announcement. I didn't do it already. Did you? Uh, when did I say that? The other day you told me to have people watch today. Oh, I think it was about all that, the movie and everything. What? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some people come to church just for that special announcement and imagination go crazy. Ooh, I wonder what he's going to say. Listen, about the movie, it, that reminded me of something. About the movie, don't let the saint build the movie up, all right? Because saint will build it up and you, you miss the point. So it's an amazing movie, Revolver. I'm not getting paid to promote it. I don't know anybody. But I just want you to see it, especially though, I even want my enemies to see that movie. It might wake up one or two of them. Because you, if you pay attention, you're going to see you in that movie. Okay. You're going to see you in that movie. Every human being will see themselves, or they're not themselves. But you'll see the same battle that you're fighting. Anyway, um, happy 4th of July. Become your own man. Become your own woman. Become an individual. It doesn't mean you won't get married. It doesn't mean you won't have fun. It's just you won't take on other identities. You got to overcome all identities. All identities. Identities like embarrassment, uh, hatred, anger, insecurity, gossiping, and loneliness, and worried about your business. If you have a business, don't worry about the business. That's your identity. Just do it one day at a time and, and unfold. Stay present and unfold by itself, all right? So don't worry about that. You don't need a plan. Did you know you don't need a plan for a business? Mm -hmm. You don't need a plan. <laughs> yeah, you just need to live in the present. The only way you think you need a plan, you listen to what the world says you need to do. And then the, the devil is working you with that. Oh, you need to go a, a five-year plan. You need to borrow money from the bank. You need to do it. It's not true. Stay present. Become your own man, your own woman. Thank you for your support. Uh, I hope this helped a little bit today. Stay with the prayer. Stop protecting and not you. Whatever you're afraid of, face it. Don't even control it. Don't fight with it. With it. Don't argue with the devil because the devil wants to destroy you. He's not trying to help you. So don't argue with the devil. Let yourself go through it. And then you will, and the devil is going to tell you all kinds of things, right? And give him the finger, and you stay present. <laughs> all right? So Thursday night meeting, right? Is this the first Thursday coming up? Yeah, first Thursday, men's forum, this coming Thursday. It's the first Thursday of, of the month. So uh, 7 p.m., Paul, men only. Thank you for your support, folks, and, and happy 4th of July. We will be doing live shows tomorrow. The office is closed, but we will be doing live shows tomorrow, right? Thank you all. I hope that this was helpful today. Thank you for coming. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs>